kick things off with the Centers for Disease Control, the government agency that spent the first two years of the pandemic saying, ah, we're all gonna get COVID! And the last six months, like, ah, we're all gonna get COVID. <laughs> Chill. And if you're one of those people who thinks the CDC has handled the pandemic badly, well, it turns out the CDC agrees with you. This morning, the CDC director promising a major overhaul after a scathing internally initiated review found the agency repeatedly botched its response to the pandemic. In a statement, Dr. Rochelle Walensky putting it bluntly, our performance did not reliably meet expectations. Walensky herself calling for that review. It found the CDC's recommendations throughout the crisis from masking to vaccines confusing and overwhelming. Uh-oh, I guess the CDC finally checked their Twitter mentions. <laughs> but she's right, the CDC rarely dropped the ball. People depended on them for clear advice, and when they didn't get it, they started looking elsewhere for answers. I mean, say what you want about Goop, their advice was consistent. <laughs> I mean, yes, the advice was to buy a $4,000 crystal butt plug, but it was consistent. <laughs> Meanwhile, the CDC was all over the place. They said, don't wear masks. But then they said, no, do wear masks, but don't because we need them. Okay, now you can wear masks, any mask, even cloth. Wait, cloth is the worst. What are you doing? <laughs> now you got COVID. Stay inside for five days. No, 10 days. No, two days. The point is, trust the science. <laughs> now, if we had more time, we could talk about whether or not the CDC learned the right lessons from COVID to prevent the next outbreak. Well, not the next outbreak, because the next outbreak is monkeypox and they're already messing that up, but the one <laughs> after that. But we just don't have the time for that, because while the CDC is struggling with multiple outbreaks, the Trump organization is overrun with an outbreak of crime. Now to breaking news, Alan Weisselberg, the Trump Organization chief financial officer, pleaded guilty today to a wide-ranging tax scheme. As part of the deal, he'll need to testify against the Trump Organization in the coming months. The company is accused of helping Weisselberg and other execs avoid income taxes by failing to accurately report their full compensation. Yeah, that's right. Trump's number two guy for the last 40 years has pled guilty to tax fraud. And can we just take a moment to appreciate how many people associated with Donald Trump have ended up in prison, huh? His lawyer, his campaign manager, his deputy campaign chairman, now the chief financial officer of his organization. Usually, you've got to run a drug cartel to have this many friends doing hard time. Because at this point, it's basically El Chapo and Donald Trump. That's it. You know what they actually need to do? They need to send all these Trump felons to school assemblies to scare kids away from Trump. <laughs> Just be like, you think hanging out with the 45th president is cool? That's what I thought. Now I'm drinking wine out of a toilet. That's my state of the union, kid. <laughs> now. Now, I know what you're thinking right now. You're wondering to yourself, surely if Trump's second in command was committing financial crimes with Trump's company, then Trump must also be involved in these crimes. Well, actually, no. Because apparently, the story is that he had no idea what was happening <laughs> in his organization at all levels for decades. He had no <laughs> clue. And that, my friends, is the kind of leadership that makes him fit to be the next president of the United States. <laughs> Truly powerful. No clue at all. Now, look, if we had more time, we could talk about how Trump pretends to be the candidates of law and order. Meanwhile, his friends can fill up an entire prison wing, but we just don't have the time for that. Because while Trump world is at war with the law, some of music's biggest legends are at war over Christmas. Mariah Carey does not want a lot for Christmas. There's just one thing she says she needs, a trademark for the title Queen of Christmas. Now Carrie is seeking to solidify her brand with a legal filing that would give her exclusive rights to use the title on everything from clothes to alcohol, dog products and more. But not everyone agrees she deserves it. Singer Darlene Love fighting back. The songstress known for her hit Christmas Baby Please Come Home, which she performed annually on the David Letterman show as a holiday tradition. Telling ABC News in a statement, I adore Mariah Carey as an artist and songwriter, but Queen of Christmas should not be exclusive to anyone except for Mary, mother of Jesus. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> the real Queen of Christmas is Mary, mother of Jesus. She should get the trademark to sell alcohol and dog toys. <laughs> it's about time. It's about time Mary got some of the financial benefit. The only thing she got out of this whole thing were gifts from those three wise men. And one of those gifts was, was myrrh? What the hell is that all about? <laughs> oh, I just gave birth in a barn. But yeah, thanks for the myrrh. Real helpful. <laughs> yeah, when I was in labor with the Son of God, the whole time I was thinking, oh, I could really use some myrrh right about now. <laughs> an idiot, get out of here. Gold guy, you can stay. Stay with the gold. 
And by the way, by the way, I thought Mariah told us that all she wants for Christmas is me. <laughs> but now she also wants trademarks? Which is it, Mariah? Next, you're gonna tell me that I won't always be your baby? Do 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 da? <laughs> now look, if we had more time, we could talk about whether anyone should have the right to trademark anything about Christmas, or we could talk about how the commercialization of Christmas has taken us away from the true meaning of the holiday, which is giving a jolly old man diabetes. But we just don't have the time for that. <laughs> because over in Russia, Vladimir Putin, the exact opposite of Santa, is handing out gifts of his own. Russia's population has been rapidly declining thanks to low birth rates and an exodus of citizens since the invasion of Ukraine. And now Vladimir Putin is taking action. This week, he announced the revival of the Soviet-era Mother Heroin Award. Any Russian woman who gives birth to 10 children will be given a one-time payment of 1 million rubles, or $16,500. Wow! $16,000 and all you have to do is have $4 million worth of kids? It's a steal! Look at you, Vlad! Wow! Huh? You hear that, Russian ladies? You get 16 grand for 10 kids. Vladimir Putin making it drizzle, huh? <laughs> this makes no sense. $16,000 for 10 kids makes zero sense. Unless that money is for you to buy a plane ticket to escape to a life without all those damn children. <laughs> and I know right now you're probably thinking, but Trevor, it's Russia. They can store the 10 kids inside each other. That's not how kids work, you idiot. <laughs> can you imagine being the 10th kid you're gonna spend your whole life wondering if your parents really wanted you or if they just wanted a smart fridge? Listen, Putin! <laughs> you don't need to go to these lengths. There's an easier way to repopulate your country, all right? Just give Nick Cannon citizenship. Problem solved. <laughs> Done. Spasiba. <laughs> now, if we had the time, we could talk about whether it's even a good idea to stuff more people into a planet that's already more crowded than a porta potty at Coachella, but we just don't have the time. Because while Russia's leader is trying to pump up his population, Finland's leader is getting in trouble for trying to pump up the jam. The Prime Minister of Finland, Sanna Marin, has faced backlash after a leaked video showed her partying. She's faced criticism from opposition parties, with one leader demanding she take a drugs test. Ms. Marin denied taking drugs and said she only drank alcohol. Okay, okay. I know that clip is extremely confusing for Americans, so let me try and explain. Some countries have leaders who don't have osteoporosis. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and they party. You see? And I know it may seem different or weird, but we should be respectful of their cultures. Now, as for the story itself, I don't think the leader of Finland did anything that any other leader in the world hasn't done, all right? Almost every other leader in the world drinks and parties. The only difference is they're not young enough to have friends who know how to use a phone, all right? <laughs> yeah, have you seen old people when they try and use a camera? They always look like they've discovered an ancient artifact and they're trying to decipher what the hieroglyphs mean. They're just like, ah, oh, okay, what's a, oh, what's, let's go. Oh, wait, wait, your friend Uber sent you a message, yeah. <laughs> Because you realize this is just the beginning. Younger generations use technology. They're gonna get older, and one day, they're gonna come into power. So it's only a matter of time before we're in a world where, like, a world war starts because some, some leader DM'd a dick pic, you know? <laughs> it's just gonna be like, what, they sent a flaccid penis? Prepare the troops! <laughs> and if you ask me, <laughs> if you ask me, Finland should be grateful. Finland should be grateful for the scandals that they have. Imagine them telling other countries about their problems. America, you won't believe it. Our prime minister was caught dancing. It's terrible. America's like, yeah, 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 I gotta go. We're about to raid the former president's hotel to get back out nuclear codes. But good luck with that, good luck with that. We gotta go, gotta go. <laughs> now, if we had more time, we could talk more about how the criticism of Sanaa Marin really just seems to be, how dare you spend your leisure time doing something young women enjoy rather than doing things older men enjoy, like hunting or smoking cigars or watching TV with one hand in your pants for some reason. You know, dignified things. 